Welcome back for yet again some more uh, Hearts, uh, Hearts of Iron 4. And um, we are still playing as France, uh, still gonna try to become uh, a communist nation. So perhaps uh, the thumbnail is a little bit confusing, but we are not yet communist. Not yet, at least. Um, we are also preparing for war with Spain, whether they may be uh, the nationalist uh, or the nationalist Spain or the Republican Spain, but my money will be on uh, the Republican Spain. Um, so yeah, we would really like to become communists so we can actually fabricate claims on Spain so we can uh, secure the southern border. Um, furthermore, still, yeah, it is the second episode so we are just um, basically getting all the, all the things going. And let's see, how are we doing with research? So we are also trying to get radar. Um, so the next buildings we might want to start building is, uh, I would say, get some more refineries going. That way we get oil, rubber, and we are self-sustaining. And we can then free up some more uh military factories which in that turn uh, gives us more room to or points to build uh, okay would we also like to advance in this section i think not so engineer company it is okay select the initial focus let's finish this one or yeah let's get uh, some factories in our colonies excellent um Oil plants too, also good to have and looking good. Okay. And perhaps also start researching fighter technology so we can start building those as well. Um, do we have any planes in production yet? No, we do not. So we can already start the close air support one without any factories just yet and let's see logistics wise we have a surplus of towed artillery but only some uh, so we could probably start also with the uh, so we could edit yet again this uh template so there we go okay and also another technology just started so we are gearing up for war we very much are so so let's see fighter technology uh, i have no interest in the tactical bomber bomber in any way perhaps you could also start thinking about um let's see or is it more worthwhile to invest in land doctrine? No, I do not think so. Just because we have uh, a negative penalty for land doctrine. So, tactical bombers are flexible and can perform both ground support and regular bombing by improving close air support in, in next uh, interacts with divisions. We can lay waste to enemy division. Um, interception detection, uh, age generation, uh, ground support, fighter detection, air support, mm, fighter agility, heavy fighter agility, naval mission efficiency. I don't really care for naval efficiency, strategic bombing. No, it's not really that much. Um, fighter detection, air support missions, ground support, air superiority mission efficiency or air generation. Air support mission efficiency. Um, I think I would like to go with air support. Yes, sir. Okay, and we can modify the government as well. Um, in this case, we're not really going to do anything with tanks just yet because we're not going to research anything. Uh, captain of industry, industry research time. Um, sure, let's get you. Thank you for joining. And the next national focus must be to start conforming, uh, reforming the government, revise the Versailles Treaty, and then support the left. 
Yes, and that's basically that way we have all the in, uh, free industry we can get. And let's see. Yeah, so good to go. Uh, how are we doing with the recruitment here? Still just uh, pumping out loads of divisions. And at some point we probably want to enact a, a different uh, conscription uh, policy. And perhaps the extensive or surface by requirement uh, all has a little bit of uh, a negative to it. So, government reform. Uh, we have some free ministry factories as well. So, let's start just building and building some airplanes. Okay, and we are coming low on manpower as well. So, yeah, really want some airplanes. Or perhaps uh, let's invest some more in in here and let's leave the airplanes to this okay um how are we doing with tanks we could start training some tank battalions so let's see we have two templates and this one has a lot of mechanized and two light tanks and this one has only light tanks um how are we doing with motorized okay um i think it's safe to say that i really wish to train you guys or oh, no uh, this one with the motorized okay and just do it like this and just be here sure and we now also get a low manpower uh, notification that's not really nice but hey it is what it is um yes uh, it would be nice if you could just get this one going as quick as we can. So, support states quo. We, uh, land doctrine. Okay, that's good to have. And then daily communist support plus 20. And we also got a radar detection. Right. So, I would like you to build some radar here. Some radar here and also some anti-air in these regions to start off okay that's good for now and we have a free research slot um okay industry we have artillery we must have as well And Japan has declared war on both China and Shanxi. Okay. Unfortunate, but uh, sure. Okay, how are we doing here? Hmm. Yeah, is there anything else we can do for now? I don't really suppose we can. I mean, it is a shame that we can't really get a communist revolutionary just yet, but because we need to get uh, the leftist rhetoric before we can start that one. But uh, yeah, okay. Let's also start building some toad anti-air, just because I need uh, to update my infantry templates to also have support for anti-air divisions. Governments reform, excellent. Let's also get the revise of the Versailles Treaty. And we can modify the government to have... Um, is there anything in here we perhaps want to have? I suppose I want a tank, an armor, let's see, tactical bomb, fleet logistics, capital ships, screens, commando, cavalry, uh, motorized attack plus 10 percent please help me okay and let's furthermore get this doctrine going i mean at this point we have five uh, research slots so we are very much uh, keeping up with everything that is happening okay And the offensive army is still just ready to rock. Mm. 
How are you looking? So we still have quite a bit of divisions. Okay. And in this uh, this area, something can happen. You can see that he has encircled units, but then again, he also has... Um, I suppose these are also encircled in a way, but uh, all here, also a little encirclement. And encirclement is basically something you want to cause as an attacker because you just, yeah, uh, demobilize or just, just render a whole unit useless. It's, it's, there's no real, real way for this unit to break free, unless, of course, you leave it alone. But yeah, that's basically the way that you can very easily overcome the enemy in this game. It's just like, encircle the living hell out of them. Okay, research the anti-tank. You research the heavy tank, sure. And you start researching the field hospital. Mm, what does it do? Uh, organization, manpower, t -t -t supply usage minus 10%. That could be nice. Or... Mm -hmm. In this case, training time, trickle back. Or... Yeah, it's just first get the field hospitals, hospitals going. Okay. Um, we also have finished researching the fighters, and I really want to have fighters. Yes, and you are very much on the top of my list. Good. Um, we will not get... Uh, it will not increase the, um, the amount of oil we import, because we are just, at this moment, just building uh, oil refineries. Or, yeah, we are building them. Excellent. So, that problem should solve itself. And the only thing that's really happening is basically that you um, just have a longer time for it to uh, process. So it just takes more time. Because every turn you do get, uh, let's see, trade. Every turn we do import uh, 24. So it's like 24 and then we come, we need 26. And then another day we import 24. So we are, we are at 48 and then we need still 26. So... It uh, solves itself. Okay, support to left. Thank you. And we still have something without a template, but that's still not a problem. So that's, let's just make a lot of toad artillery and toad anti air. Okay. Um, then I wish to find this one unit so we can actually get rid of the other template. So sort by type. And then we would have you. Um, what are you exactly? So you are the four, four light tanks. So I'll just change you over. Okay, and then I should be able to delete this template. Oh, wait, I just... Okay, let's give you a different icon. So let's make you a star. Excellent. Oh, and we are making stars. So all the... Div other ones are hold on um this guy so you guys are here okay and we just want you to become a star thank you excellent so interval artillery good to have and we can't do this one just yet we are in 1938, so let's start doing those. Just reduce the research time even further. And there we are. So now, let's see. We have a surplus of one, but we're still importing quite a bit. Uh, and this should almost start to tick up. Okay, so the Anschluss of Austria. Austria. Uh, after the successful coup d'etat by the local Nazi party in Vienna, German troops have crossed the, the Austrian border and taken control of the country. No fighting has been reported and the German soldiers were greeted by cheer, cheering crowds in the cities. In a speech before a massive crowd at the 
Heiden Heldenplatz in Vienna, Hitler announced that, uh, the, Anschluss for, the Anschluss of Austria annexing the country into Germany. The oldest, uh, the oldest eastern province of uh, German people shall be, from this point on, the newest bastion of the German Reich. Okay, so this violates the Versailles Treaty like a lot, but hey, there's not really much you can do about it. I mean, yeah, we can declare war, but why would we want to? <laughs> we first need to eat Spain in its full juiciness. However, um, oh wait, it doesn't really matter because it's basically a fascist faction versus a communist faction. So, yeah, uh, because if Spain were to remain uh, diplomatic and the world tension is above of 20, then all the allies, allied nations are going to guarantee other um, diplomatic uh, or not diplomatic, but uh, democratic nations, which sucks a bit. Okay, support to left. Okay, uh, should we also just, just get on with it? I mean, I just did finish this one, so left is referic. referic. So, which does what exactly? So, gains Maurice Soras and grants communist revolutionary. Okay. Hmm, no, let's just get this one. Become communists, please do, at some point. Okay, the first war will kick off in just like a tiny bit, and then we are just gonna kick ass. Okay. Um, so we, do we want to s add anything? I don't really think so. Still fire 1939. It would be nice if you could already. So that's like a 50% increase in time. Mm, I think I want, just want to go for it. So we can have a better tank, right? Mm. And in that case, perhaps we do want to have a tank designer in place. So armor research will decrease and we probably should have done it all the other way around. So heart attack and armor or max speed and reliability. I think I want reliability. So we will uh, get AMX, AMX as our, oh, we can't because we still need to get the army reform going. So we could go for you for Renault, but I don't really think I want Renault just yet. Sorry, you know, I just want reliability and speed. Okay, dive bombing is now part of our repertoire. Excellent. And so, 1938, let's get these bombs going as well. Yet again, let's boost the, um, the infantry's capabilities to really kick ass. So, uh, the Molotov Ribbentrop Pact. Uh, diplomats from Germany and Soviet Union concluded what observes uh, what observers are describing as a historic agreement today with the uh, signing of the Molotov Ribb Ribbentrop Pact named after German foreign minister Joachim von Ribbentrop and his Soviet counterpart uh, Vyach Vyacheslav Molotov <laughs> this non-aggression pact uh, attribulates that ne neither side or stipulates that neither side will ally itself to nor aid an enemy uh, of the other. Foreign diplomats uh, warn that this treaty effectively gives Germany a free hand to wage war in Europe without having to fear Soviet intervention. However, if we all look back to history, this Molotov of Freedom Pact had also uh, the agreement that once Germany had taken Poland, that the eastern half would go to the Soviet Union. And that's basically what will happen. But first, um, I think Germany will just do, um, uh, yeah, just first goes after Czechoslovakia, because that's what they usually tend to do. Okay, so the communist threat, another option. So uh, the, the threat of uh, that the United Germany and Soviet pose 
is too great to be ignored. After the two countries agreement for the uh, partition of Poland, we have a difficult choice to make. If we let Parti Communiste Francais operate as they uh, have so far, we open ourselves to international struggle uh, as the Soviets uh, grow in power. By pres prescribing any communist activities or affiliations with Parti Communiste Francais, we send a powerful uh, signal to all citizens that we will not tolerate anyone who pose pose a threat to peace. Traditionally, we have been able to include Parti Communiste Francais in political discussions, but as they refuse to renounce their allegiance to Moscow, it may be time to make drastic measures. Which I totally agree with, but of course, so uh, prescribed communism in France, which will uh, basically change the popularity of communism, which we don't, do not want. Or we could disagreements are part of the diplomatic, the dip democratic process. Of course it is, you know, let's just become communist already. Okay, so however, this is going to be the end of this episode. Um, I'd like to thank you for watching the next episode. We will most certainly turn into a communist nation and be a happy, happy workers nation. So uh, thanks for watching and bye.